Hey guys, this is Alfred Joy Shark, and today I'm going to be doing a review of a free application in the Google Play Store that pretty much finally brought Flash to the Android platform a few years back. This is Skyfire Web Browser 4.0. Let's take a look. Alright guys, so here we have the Skyfire icon itself. You can see it right there. Touching it, of course, takes you right into the application and it loads up. Now, one of the things I actually don't like about this application right from the get-go is indeed the user interface. Just not a big fan of it. Of course, when you start scrolling, you get a full screen experience outside of the notification bar, which is definitely pretty good. I, I do favor that. But just the look of this bar up here and tapping menu and bringing up the silver bar, none of it I really like. But just to show you guys what we got here, we have the URL bar, which is where you can actually type in the website that you'd like to go to. So we'll just type in a website here hit the OK button, it'll load it up. The web browser is definitely just as fast as the stock browser, so there's nothing to complain about really with the performance as far as speed goes. And once it actually loads up the page, you have the scrolling, which you can see also works very well. And one thing I really like about this, this web browser is that it loads the pages the way the old Android browser did. If you're browsing in the newest Android browser that's on the Galaxy Nexus or any of the other ICS devices, you'll get things like that, the white spacing, but you'll get it on only things like scrolling. You can see here I can scroll essentially as fast as I'd like, and I don't get any white spacing, any checkerboard, any blank spacing, none of that kind of stuff. And the reason being is just the way this web browser is actually held. So I really like that. You can see pinch to zoom is very smooth. When you're zooming, you do get uh, white spacing, but the second you let go, it, it loads up really. Um, so, you know, give or take there. Got the instant Google search up here, which I definitely like. Now here you have the back button. This will take you back. You also have a home button, which takes you to this home. You can take a look at your bookmarks right here as well as your history. Got a little button right here which opens up your open tabs and you can add new tabs like so. And you can see what it looks like with multiple tabs. Very easy to close them. This is your user agent. You can change if you wanted to load up the desktop site, the Android site, or just whatever your default is. And this pull down menu brings in more settings which we'll take a look at. Down here though you have you know Facebook and Twitter integration. You can like pages, look at popular pages, and you can swipe. Uh, to continue looking, you know, you have things like Fireplace, uh, Groupon built right in. You can see these things just kind of pop up if you'd like. You can share pages, sports, news, finance, Google Reader. So these are kind of just uh, little additions add, uh, added on to the browser. Hitting the options, you can actually check and uncheck what you want in there, as well as change the order of everything, which I think is very nice for the people who are actually going to use this menu. So anyways, tapping this arrow button right here, we have jump forward, which I think would be a little bit better next to the back, um, you know, kind of like Opera Mini 7 where you can jump back and forward instantly. Really nice feature there. Uh, it's kind of weird that you have to dive in the menu for forward and not backwards. Yeah, find on page, which is a feature to just let you find things that are on the page. So you can see uh, there is, let's just see, Colbert Report. So we can tap this arrow, hit find on page, and type in Colbert hit enter and it finds exactly what you searched for and you can move between the different things that it's found close that out if you'd like scroll back to the top you also have select text which is a way to just uh, select the text that you'd like to anyways get out of that you can see a force close there now I've actually ran into a few force closes in my testing of this application uh, something I really hope Skyfire works on anyways Jumping here, we have Add Shortcut to Home, which is just adding the icon, which you've already done. You can also share the current page you're in. You're in. Take a look at the downloads you've downloaded from this browser. Hitting Spread the Word uh, is liking the application on the market, or tweeting about them, or, uh, or liking them on Facebook if you'd like. You also have Report Video Problems if you're having issues with that. And there's a Help screen, but there's the Settings screen, which we want to take a look at. Tapping on that allows us to check and uncheck Safe Searching, uh, enabling video alerts. And then under screen settings, there's keeping the screen on, showing the status bar. And then you also got some settings for browser settings, as you can see here, different pop-up win windows and JavaScript loading and um, loading the images. You have standard zoom controls, just the buttons. Uh, you can load pages as, and that's that user agent once again. You can change the start page, which is very cool. You can also set a custom one if you'd like. Uh, the plugins, you can 
always have them on or you can have them on demand. On demand will speed up your browsing experience if you're not using them. There's also toolbar settings, which we saw a little bit earlier. Privacy and security settings, which is just clearing passwords and different information, as well as cache. You have the version of Skyfire you're on, and you can send them some feedback and view the legal information. And that would be the settings. Now, again, you can see the actual web browsing experience was decent. I'll go ahead and load up one more page here so you can get a gist for how it all performs. We are over a Wi-Fi network right now. You can see the page load pretty instantly. Again, you can see pinch to zoom. Uh, when you're zooming in, you don't. nothing really happens. You get a very smooth zoom in experience. But zooming out, you will get that white board. This is a pretty short web page, so you know, scrolling is pretty perfect. We zoom in. Show you guys that scrolling again. Very quick, very smooth, no problem at all. Um, you know, clicking links. You know, Opera Mini has a weird way to click links. You know, something weird happens. But here on Skyfire, you don't really have that problem. It just clicks the link like the regular old Android web browser. Um, and that's really it. That's Skyfire. Now, the big thing about it, though, what we want to show you real quick before we leave off, we'll jump into YouTube. We'll tap on a video, and there's a video button down here, and as you can see, um, it'll actually ask you to buy a $5 plugin to let you watch video. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think it's worth it, and let me explain this. First of all, when you use a Skyfire for watching videos, you can't fast forward or rewind the videos really. Uh, the interface is just pretty bad. You can't select any quality. You can't interact with the video in any way. So it's really just, you know, start the video and let it play until it's over or until you hit back. Um, and for $5, that's really poor, you know. Um, you have a built-in YouTube application. Most videos you're going to watch are probably on YouTube. Um, and if you're not, I mean, get a new phone that supports Flash. Android supports Flash. It's Adobe Flash Player is in the Google Play Store. And you can download it right onto the stock browser. So I don't really think Skyfire is in need anymore because of the basic requirements Skyfire has to run properly. You know, you, you can probably get an Android phone that has Flash support with those requirements anyways. So kind of a, you know, pointless application in my opinion. But nonetheless, that's Skyfire. So this application, since it came out so long ago, has over 5 million downloads, but a 4.3 out of 5 star rating. Now with an application this popular, you would expect ratings a little bit better, and I would actually give this application a little bit worse rating than what's in the Google Play Store. I think this application is not really needed at all, considering Android now has official Adobe Flash Player support. Um, when you actually buy the $5 video license key, which didn't even exist when this application first came out, uh, and is just expensive if you ask me. Um, and then once you pay that, you don't even get a full-fledged Flash video experience. You can, you can hardly even play and pause the video successfully, and you can't even fast-forward or rewind well at all. So I think Sapphire really needs to work on their interface as far as not only the browser itself, but the video experience when you're actually watching the video, because it just doesn't work very well at all. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.